From the very beginning, it's clear this book just feels better written than normal for the series. I can't quite put my finger on what it is, but it's different. The author, Ellen Kushner, has written a pretty captivating and fun choose-your-own-adventure title with this entry. There are no missing or dead parents in this book. No boat crashes. You actually live at home with your parents, although you do in fact have that one weird relative that this story jumps off from. Your great aunt Celia lives on the edge of town and she's a real eclectic firecracker. You of course are her favorite relative and she's gone off on some expedition and asked you to look after her house while she's gone. This book could just dive right into the choices, but Kushner doesn't work that way. She sets up the story and then delivers all the background before throwing any branches at you. The house is described in detail as the bizarre place that it is and it gives you a feel for Celia. You're four pages in when the first choice arrives. Your instructions state that if she's not back by the 31st, then you're to take her keys and open the secret room and open only one of the three boxes therein. Of course, she doesn't come back by the deadline or this would be one lame book, so you have to first find this secret room, but when you do, you're face to face with the boxes marked past, never, and future. So there's basically three different storylines in this book. The past storyline finds you dealing with an apparently English boy from centuries past who comes flying out wielding a sword ready for action. You've snatched him from the midst of a battle and technically saved his life, although he wouldn't know that. So this narrative follows all of the shenanigans of hanging out with someone from the past in a modern time. TVs, cars, school, rock music, etc. are all dealt with, much to his confusion. He believes you to be an elven magician, but what else can you possibly be? You may run into instances of him attacking dragons, or cars as we know them. I've certainly had a car or two I'd like to have attacked with a sword before. Threatening school bullies with his sword, which by the way is something you can allow him to do or ask him not to do. Of course I told him to go for it. You might laugh as he bows to your mom, the mistress of the blue flame, he has no clue what a gas stove is, or recoil as he shouts in class at the teacher for referring to his people as primitive during a lesson on Beowulf. You can also end up in his time and dealing with the people of that era, accusing you of being evil, satanic, elfish, and just all around no good and weird. The future storyline has a girl with green and purple hair tumbling out of the box. She was in the midst of an earthquake and, again, you've just saved her life by pulling her out of her time. She is baffled, of course, and insists that time travel is impossible. Once you convince her that she really has gone back into the past and left her country of New Brazil behind, she enlists you on a plan to stop an assassination that is about to happen soon, right there in your town that she knows of from history, and it will be the start of a major war in North America. You can attempt to help her stop this assassination, or you can allow it to happen. You have to think about the ramifications of changing history. The Never storyline will have you contending with a rather hungry griffin. The Never box is a timeline that never was. The griffin was in a battle with a crocodile it was about to eat. It would have died, but you opening the box and pulling it out has saved its life. So now you have a huge flying animal in your aunt's house and you have to figure out what to do with it. You need to find a way to keep the griffin fed, which turns out to be an expensive endeavor. You can get a job using the griffin to make deliveries to help offset the cost of food while trying to convince it not to eat people's pets or statues of cows. The beast turns out to be afraid of umbrellas, which you discover is because your Aunt Celia swatted him with one before. I once had a cat that was terrified of spoons because he accidentally smacked himself with one animals and their irrational fears. You can also wind up traveling through these worlds looking for Celia and maybe learning how to use this magic yourself. Be careful though because one wrong move and you can wind up in a place that looks right but it's totally wrong. Some of the endings you may encounter are looking for your Aunt Celia and instead finding her as someone else, a vicious woman named Zelda, queen of the gypsy headhunters, pawning the boy from the past off on a teenage girl who thinks he's a rock star. She says her dad is a real ogre and he offers to slay him for. What's funny about this ending is that you know he's not kidding about killing her dad and yet you say nothing. You just let him go with her, glad the problem is being turned over to someone else. Going back into the past with the boy and both of you getting your head smashed in with an axe. Potentially traveling forever through various never worlds looking for your aunt and finding giant green lizards walking down the street in pink sneakers. Traveling to the future with the girl and being killed in an earthquake. Scoring ten grand when you and the griffin foil a criminal plan to steal a prized dog. Traveling through history with your aunt and never aging while seeing all of the major things that have ever happened. Living in the past with the boy who becomes king and you become his wizard since you have matches, a lighter, rubber bands, a compass, fishing line, plastic bags, and ping pong balls. Celia stops by and promises to teach you real magic at some point, but she has something she needs to do in Baghdad. 
Okay. Making the griffin angry and getting eaten. Opening all three boxes and all hell breaks loose in the secret room. Getting the griffin shot by a cop, killing you both. Screaming in terror as you spend eternity trapped in your worst nightmare worlds that you've conjured up. This book was pretty fun to read through and was quite inventive and entertaining, and I would say it definitely ranks among the classics of this series. And if this book is any indication, Kushner is probably one of the better writers of the series. She also wrote Outlaws of Sherwood Forest, The Enchanted Kingdom, The Statue of Liberty Adventure, and Knights of the Round Table. I haven't read those books since the 80s, however, so I don't remember if they were any good. But because of how good this one is, I'm sure I'll give those a go at some point. Ellen Kushner didn't stop at just doing Choose Your Own Adventure books. She went on to be a noted author of fantasy books, especially in the fantasy of manners subgenre, where she wrote Swords Point, followed by three sequels, along with some other award-winning works as well. And she's also hosted a radio program in the past for nearly 15 years. The illustrations for Mystery of the Secret Room were done by Judith Mitchell. They're nicely done, but they're not exactly among the top tier of the series. The inanimate objects are well enough done, but I'm not a fan of the way Mitchell draws people. Judith Mitchell has illustrated many books, but I'm not sure how many exactly she did for the Choose Your Own Adventure series. It does seem like, however, that whenever Kushner wrote to Choose Your Own Adventure book, Mitchell was given the illustration work most of the time. A funny side note about this series and the illustrations, from what I understand, the authors did not pick the artist. The publishing company assigned stories to the illustrators, and the authors would give them notes on what needed to be drawn. I don't think they necessarily even saw one another. You wrote a book, you made notes on the art you wanted, an artist was assigned, and the illustrations came back, and that was that. At least that's what I've heard on the situation. Maybe it was a little different than that, but what do I know? I'm an adult reading teenager books, making videos about said teenager teenager books for adults to watch. There's probably a better use of my time on this planet. But hey, until there is.